Hello viewers, and welcome to my first hands-on Hotshot Racing, a game that feels like it's been forever in development from ra uh, Racing Apex years ago, uh, before uh, Curve Digital got involved as a publisher, and now we see the final game, which is releasing today. So you can get your hands on this now, classic, uh, sort of polygon virtual racing style action at least in terms of the visuals now uh, I'm gonna be coming back with uh, another couple of videos on this one looking at the switch version uh, which is basically identical to what you see here in every way uh, 60 FPS uh, on the, the switch uh, we'll have a team chat to come I'm probably ch chatting to a couple of the guys about you know, th their various impressions not just of the game and of their, their sort of memories of various racing games, but just general handling impressions. The handling is not going to be for everyone. It's a rather interesting mix in terms of handling. I'm going to talk a bit about that. And I'm just showing here one of the entry level cars in terms of speed, at least, and some of the different viewpoints that are available inside the car, outside the car, stuff like that. So lots to look at the presentation is very nice nice rotating courses it's very clean very colorful you know it captures a lot of that that, that sort of vibe if you like uh, and really nice to see maps I, there was a part of me that wanted to have a zoom function you know we could sort of zoom in the map by pressing the L and R buttons it's something they used to have in games years ago on little maps like that would have been nice and you got characters here as well uh, different cars, different attitudes, and they've got a bit of personality. It's great, really nice, and they've got that sort of blocky look and vibe with the rest of the visuals. The funny thing is, there was always this sort of muffled speech in arcade games years ago, and it uh, it sort of stood out. It's quite unusual, bit of a broken English, if you like, uh, when it was uh, put in through Japanese. And you've got this cops and robbers mode, so it's not just the racing. You've also got a couple of other modes in there I've added as well. So this was just my first go. At this point of driving, I hadn't got the hang of the handling. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment as well. It's an unusual handling, as you can see there, model. That's one of my one of my aspects. I'm, I'm, I don't know how I feel about it in terms of the, the uh, oversteer and the tank slapping style to it. But either way, I like the lights, the, the, the polygon balls they have around the lights to show flashing. That's a really nice touch. And it's these types of elements that give it a bit of the real retro feel. It's coming up with ideas because the idea was always you've got to maximise your hardware. And it was always cunning in what developers did to try and maximise that. Also, in terms of circuit design, as we look at a drive or explode mode here, where you've got to go as fast as you can, win or you blow up, kind of an eliminator. But circuit design and again I'm going to talk about this on the team chat a bit more but it's actually inspired by a wide range of racing games you know I, I, I see many types of titles I mean we talk about virtual racing for the first track you saw there with the blue skies but you know I see I see uh, uh, you know games like Dirt Dash uh, I see games like Galico from Galico I see Galico is uh, another developer actually that, that, that sort of reminds me more of their games than Sega games I see a Motor Tune Grand Prix 1 and 2 in here as well. You know, I see lots of elements uh, from different titles. Bit of You've got the scale of the Daytona 2 and the Scud Race in there. Uh, sort of adventure playgrounds, if you like, where these cars uh, drive off to. Uh, nice scale to the environment. Uh, vibrancy. You could imagine this being in the arcade at some point. You know, if this was in the arcade, probably in 90, 92, 93, it would have been around that time. Uh, we'd be some way between flat shaded polygons and uh, texture mapping and this would have been great for showcasing the maximum of the flat shaded polygon era. Uh, the, this isn't a review at this stage, I've just not played it enough for an actual review at the moment uh, but we will talk about, the other guys are going to go more into that, they're actually going to be playing through it a bit hardcore to give us uh, more details on the uh, all aspects of it. But I'm going to talk a little bit about the handling. So. Let's talk about handling. I've seen uh, rumours as we go back to the racing now. Uh, I've seen rumours that, that this is like somewhere between Ridge Racer and Daytona USA, people say to me. And I've played it and it's nothing like Ridge Racer. Uh, Ridge Racer is, there's two types of uh, way you can approach the corner. Ridge. You can touch the brake and turn into the corner and the car will slide. The car will slide in an axis of the corner. 
So you can turn into the corner, you can turn away from the corner, the car will continue sliding through the corner. The quickest way to do it is to lift and then accelerate again, not touch the brake at all in Ridgeway. So that, now you can do that almost in a straight line. We used to refer to it as ice skating because you'd be on a virtually straight piece of road. You'd, you'd take your finger off the accelerator, put it back on, and then it would make a sort of sliding sound. It's as if you're sliding across the ground while you were virtually driving in a straight line. And then you got a speed boost on the exit of that. So that was Ridge Racer's style, was maximizing that. So it's not like that. Then you look at Daytona, where you're braking and then turning into a corner, or you're braking before a corner. It's actually a more conventional driving style, or you had the use of the gears. You change your gear quickly and you could slide through some corners. There were different techniques, uh, depended on the corner and the circuit as to which technique worked the best. Uh, but what we have here, uh, I, I, at first, I, I refer to it as being closer to OutRun 2 than any other game. You brake, you turn into the corner, the car gets into a slide. Depending on the attributes of the car will depend on how balanced the slide is. But in the end, I found that that was a bit slower. Then I started flicking the brake and accelerator to see ooh, what, what happens there as we see a bit more cockpit cam, which I do like the cockpit cam on some of these cars, uh, though I have to admit it's not practical to use. You're much better off using the external cam because you just sliding the car is quite frankly very difficult when uh, you're in inside the car. You just can't see the back end well enough. Um, but then I thought Outrun 2 it was more similar to that. Uh, and but there's this there's this situation when you're coming out of a corner, you're sliding in, and Outrun you would you turn to slide into the corner. If you slide away, the car will continue sliding. So if you turn to the right, the car would keep sliding right. If you turn left, the car would keep turning right, but you'd move across to the left-hand side of the racetrack. In this, you literally, the car will swing the other way. So you can find yourself coming to a tank slapper very easily, very unpredictably. That's the bit I don't like at the moment, is that there's an unpredictable balance to the, the vehicle coming out of the corners sometimes. Uh, you can get around it, but it happens sometimes and it's quite frustrating. Uh, the car can come out of a slide, uh, again unpredictably sometimes where it comes out of the slide. Again, an example here, you know, I was racing that from cockpit cam, then, uh, then again there just trying different techniques of, you know, why is it sliding, where, where's the handling, how it's working. So through this video I was progressing with not knowing what I was doing and then gradually finding a style and how it worked. Eventually, what I realized is you don't take your finger off the accelerator at all. You just literally press the brake at the same time and the car slides into the corner. So that's the first thing you do to save a lot of time. Next thing you have to do is be very subtle with your exit. So if you put too much opposite lock on when exiting a corner, the car just slides around in the opposite direction. You'll end up facing the wall. Very frustrating. I don't like that because sometimes the car comes out of a slide. When it comes out of a slide in the middle of a corner, a long corner I literally didn't know what to do and I never did figure it out I never did figure out how to get the car come on get back into a slide oh all that happens is it just coasts wide and goes into the wall so that's something which the handling which uh, uh, if you can get the hang of it but it seems more luck than judgment to me I mean I know what to do but there are just times when it just doesn't work and I don't know why uh, and then I just end up crashing and that's the end of my race um, Again, improving gradually. I still wasn't quite able to put the car like there, missing the apexes way wide. Don't quite know what to do to get those apexes. Haven't figured that out yet. Uh, again, just slight touches on the brake, trying to glide it through the corner there. Use my boost through these corners. I'm finding, uh, trying to figure out whether it's better to boost into the apex or not of the corner, whether that gives you more acceleration. Certainly boost on boost action is the way to go if you really want to get the most out of your your car boosting through slides so by drifting the car you build up your boost gauge and that gives you more boost this is the time trial mode where it gives you a stack of boosts but you have to do a full lap before you start so that you can get a boost across the line and that's something which uh, does take a lot of time up when you're doing the time trial mode so it can be a bit frustrating you make one single error you have to go all the way around and start again essentially but I improved my times uh, and gradually got the hang of the game more and more and more and the different styles uh, competing through the standard GP and the hard GP tournaments uh, onto the expert GP. Uh, the expert GP is where I found started to find the game more frustrating than fun 
uh, you'd get to the fourth round and the rubber band AI, which literally are very rubber band, as we said, would, would just take you out in the final corner of the fourth GP and that was it. You know, restart, restart entire GP. That means restarting all four races, which was uh, hugely frustrating at times. Uh, there's also the option of a boost start, which I didn't get there, but if you rev up to the yellow at the start, you'll get a little boost start as well. That helps you get away off the line. It's very important to get away, away well off the line, uh, despite the cars sort of heaping behind you. If you get caught up in them in a kind of a bit of a bundle, they'll stick with you like a cloud all the way around right to the end. And that's why on the Expert, you just find that they get super aggressive on the final lap. They take you out in the final corner and you lose your races. As I say, restart means restarting all four races. Very frustrating. So there's some good elements in there. The game itself is less like virtual racing now, which it visually resembles. As I say more like a Galico type of game. It's got a, a, a style all of its own, which is no bad thing. And it has that nice toy town blue sky vibe. We love the visuals. We love all of that sort of retro vibe and feeling that comes from it. So lots to see, lots to do, lots to explore. So there's various elements you can do to customize your car, uh, give it a bit of personality, paint jobs, stuff like that. Uh, and I'll explore all of that on uh, future content. And I'll look at the Switch version as well on a future video. But um, that's it for me for now on this quick look at Hot Shot Racing. There'll be more from me very soon. Hello viewers, well thanks for watching the video today. Do like and subscribe, it supports what we do. Do become a YouTube member, YouTube Patreon supports all of our content you see on the channel and of course lots of gaming from retro to modern games. I love it all in terms of racing action. So click on one of the two videos just there to find out more.